What's up everyone? This is Jeff from Pen and Journal. So good to see everyone. And I'm gonna do the last video of 2022, a round up of my curated 12 fountain pen collection. And I'm gonna talk a bit about Jesus as well. So please stay on for the whole video and let's get started. So over here, this is my cargo case right so i keep 10 pens inside this case you can do an online search for this case it is very affordable uh, i really recommend this case for those who are looking for a cheap uh, canvas fabric case right if you are not into leather stuff this is a perfect case you can carry it is small it is uh, minimal very reliable and just a quick run through right the zipper is sturdy over here you have your pens, five on the front side, so to speak, you have your flap to protect it. I have my micro fiber cleaning cloth. Please check out my YouTube shots on <laughs> the simple hack, so to speak. Another flap and then the other five pens. And I believe it comes in uh, 20 or 24 pen option with different colors. Please check it out. I'm not too sure about it. I got this for quite a while. I totally recommend it once again is Kako right okay so let's get started uh, so in no particular order I'm just going to do a quick rundown of the trail pens in my curated pen collection and the first pen will be this right I'm going to go very quickly the first pen will be this Delta Dolce Vita Federico Stand 2 right I have a review on this please check it out this is my really my go-to pen. I love this pen. It comes with uh, EF nib, fusion nib, right? Piston filler, gorgeous resin, lovely pen. So the first pen, and we're gonna have a bit of a writing sample as well. Pen number one. This is the Delta Dolce Vita. And the Rico stand two four. Okay, this is the fusion nib. Comes in the EF, and I've inked up in Jerbon's Lee the Tap. Beautiful nib, beautiful writing experience. Lovely pen. So this is pen number one. Pen number two, quickly, the Pilot Prera, lovely, reliable writer, still nib. I have this in the B, broad, but to me, this is more like a stub nib. I have it inked up in Nautilus Golden Brown, reliable, super satisfying capping experience. Oh, just can't get enough of this. And very quickly, pen number two, we have the Pilot. Prera, this is in the B, or I would rather prefer to call it a stub nib ink, noodleless golden brown. I have an ink cartridge here that I refill using a needle syringe, right? I used to have this uh, eye drop, but I find it wow, okay, it causes a lot of burping, and the feed is sometimes can be a little bit oversaturated, so I have gone back to the ink cartridge itself lovely reliable pen right so pen number three moving on very quickly this is the mont blanc master stuck one four six right i have a history of this pen a story to tell this pen used to be leaking like crazy please check out my past videos about this pen how i fix it praise the lord it is working perfectly now right so typically i think you all know what you can get from the Mont Blanc, two-tone nib, piston feel, uh, ebonite feet. This is stamped in West Germany, right? The stamp is West Germany, so this is considered a little bit like a vintage per se. Lovely resin with a quite a good of a heft, very luxurious looking feel. This is a reliable 
writer. So we have our number three pen, E, Mont Blanc, Meisterstück, one for six. This is either in an F or M, right? I'm not too sure. Inked up in Noodleless Apache Sunset. Just beautiful, right? So moving on to pen number four, this is the uh, Pelican M605 Tortoise Shell Black Edition. Uh, the edition, limited edition, so to speak, is in 2022, year of 2022. So I love the stripe patterns with the randomness of uh, breakage and black stripes. It gives it a bit of like a rodent kind of look. I change up the nib to a two color EF nib. This is 14K, beautiful looking pen. I love the design and the main reason why I get this pen is because of this gorgeous stripes that just look like rodent. And it writes well, right? So we have pen number four, the Pelican M605. This would be the tortoise shell black limited edition 2022. I have it in the EF. The ink is very simple, pilot black, right? Beautiful, smooth writer that is a, a stunner looker. <laughs> okay, now we come down to pen number five. This is the pilot. Custom 742, right? Uh, just beautiful. And some people may ask why not a 743 or why not a 74? Why not custom 74 or a 743? But why a 742? The reason is I find that this 742 size is just perfect for me. I love the grip, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's not too girthy, not too thin. The weight, the balance is just perfect and a bit of history as well. This pen, when it comes, writes terribly, but I tune it to be just one of the, my best writers, right? And I just love it. I just simply love it. So pen number five, very quickly, this is the Pilot Custom 742. This is an F nib, but I tune it up to be more like an F M now. And the ink, Noodleless Aircrop Blue Black, right? One of my reliable go-to writers every single day. And now we're coming down to pen number six, right? This is more considered a grill pen, if you will. This is the Delta Israel 50th Anniversary Limited Edition. This pen is just amazing with the looks, sterling silver trims, right? I won't go into details. Beautiful white resin that is slightly translucent. Uncap reveals that gorgeous 18K two-tone nib that, in my opinion, writes like a dream, writes like a champion. It is just simply phenomenal, wet, buttery smooth, this is the Delta Israel 50 Anniversary Limited Edition. This comes in the F 18K and the ink is Waterman's Serenity Blue. And yes, with an ebonite feet as well. Beautiful, beautiful pen, beautiful trimmings, lovely. Gorgeous pen. I will consider this a grill pen indeed. Right, so moving on quickly, we'll go to pen number seven and number eight. And why two together is because they are the Twisby Ecos, right? Twisby Ecos. And it says a lot about Twisby when I have in my collection the only duplicate, right? This is in the white rose scroll, this is in the smoke rose scroll, and Phenomenal writers, I will call this the pen that is the best bang for your buck. Steel nibs, but believe me, the nibs, 
the steel nibs write better than most of the gold nibs that you will encounter out there. So this first one is the Twisby Eco. This is in the rose gold and this is the white version. EF nib writes like a champion straight out of the box without tuning whatsoever. Smooth, wet. I have this inked up in the uh, I believe Twisby Royal Purple, right? Gorgeous combination. I love the colors of rose gold, white, and purple. Speaks of royalty. <laughs> and this, of course, is the uh, smoke version, right? I got this in the EF as well, but to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed about the writing experience, a little bit scratchy from the get go, and I actually tune this myself so instead on an ef it writes now more like an fm right a fine medium and i have in this up in pilot iru shizuku yama budo and i thought the combination the, the ink color with the trimmings is just beautiful right you can't go wrong with twisby super reliable writers good lookers i love the feel in my hand Right, so that is pen 7 and pen 8. Now we will come to pen number 9. This is the Aurora Optima in burgundy red. And this pen, if believe me, writes also like a champion. Ebonite feet. It's, uh, I believe it's 14k, not, yeah, 14k. Uh, Aurora tend to have a bit of a feedbacky feel to the writing experience, but for myself, I kind of like smooth out the nib just a tad. The feedback is still there, but right now it's just, mm, right? <laughs> it's just amazing. Beautiful red resin, piston filler, small pen, but the grip feel is solid. It's very, very comfortable. And some may call this a grill pen, right? And I believe if you're really into pocket pens, into resin pens like this, this is a pen that you can and should get, right? To have a feel of that luxurious feel you can get from the uh, Aurora print. Okay, so this is the Aurora Optima Burgundy Red. Please forgive my handwriting, it's never good, <laughs> especially on a camera. I just can't write and I just don't know why. This is the F nib and the ink, die mine or diamine ancient copper right so this is pen number nine and now we come down to pen number ten and this could be a surprise to people this is the parker dual fold international it's not the sentinel but it's an international that means it's a smaller version it comes in the marble blue right 18k nib in an ef I love the raisins. I'm a big fan of raisins. This is my number 10 pen. So this is, is the Parker, if I can spell, Parker Dual Fold International. This comes in the EF nib, but I tune it more to like an F nib because there's a lot of feedback and it's slightly scratchy. I tune it, I kind of smooth it out a little bit. So right now it writes more like an F. It writes a bit more wet now, but just look at the nib, gorgeous. Right, I mean, do a, a full review on this in the near future. Please look out for this beautiful looking pen. So two more pens. So they are all hooked up in my uh, TNs, my traveler's notebooks. I have pen loops for them. These are the other two that I always kept uh, in the pen loop of these two TNs that I always carry with me. This is my planner journal. This is my Bible Devo journal. Uh, please check out my videos for a bit of a run through of these journals. But nevertheless, let's get straight into it, into pen number 11. This is the Pilot Mule 701. Right, this is made in 1973 in the 1970s. Amazing, amazing piece of engineering. One piece design, 
stainless steel, the nib and the body is all one piece and it writes amazingly smooth and wet. And I'm not too sure what pilot is thinking they should bring this pen back. This is just amazing. Right, this is the Pilot Mew 701. This is F and I have this inked up in Pilot Red. Right, Pilot Red. Amazing pocket pen. You can pose it and you got a length to the hole is a little bit uh, narrow for my grip, but you can't go wrong with a Pilot Mew. It's just amazing. It's just a piece of history that I would really, really love to be part of. And finally, but not least, this is pen number 12. This is the Pilot Kakuno. It's my first fountain pen ever that brings me in this into this fountain pen journey. It is my first love. There is so much good things to say about this pen. I would call this pen literally the most underrated pen in history, right? This is a pen that I'll literally call it as the most underrated pen in fountain pen history if you if you will right i will do a full review on this there's so many good things to say about this pen super reliable super affordable if you are new to fountain pens this is one pen i will totally recommend i'll totally compel you to get to give it a try and you will not be disappointed by this pen right now so let's bring it back all the trial pens and i want to talk a little bit about Jesus and what he has to do with fountain pens, right? So if you are still watching to this point, thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's just so amazing to have uh, supporters for my channel. My channel is small, but I just want to do a bit of shift as I go into the year of 2023, right? I just have this urge of um, you know that I want to glorify God, right? I want to glorify God even more in this in the new year of two zero two three. So I really, really, really uh, am thankful for every one of you that have supported my channel in one way or another with your likes, your subscriptions, so on and so forth. So if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. Give it a thumbs up. Share this video. I would really, really appreciate it. It helps my channel a lot. And also, I want to focus more right now, more on Christ himself, right? So now, what has Jesus to do with fountain pens, you may ask, right? So for myself, my fountain pen journey comes to a point where I find that it is gone overboard. I've bought pens on impulse. I've bought pens uh, like there's no tomorrow, just blowing my budget, blowing my resources that is from God himself. I've mismanaged his resources that he's given to me. And let's be honest, I'm not a good steward of the resources given to me by blowing my budget on pens. And I've bought so many pens through auctions, through onlines, and to the point where I'm actually selling off, right? So you have the trial pens here. I'll be keeping some for memory's sake or some rare pieces that I want to keep in my collection, but the rest, I'm pretty much selling it off. And why is it so that I've, I want to encourage everyone uh, with my story is that this is that I find, I find that, you know, this journey of mine comes to a point where it's too overwhelming in pursuing fountain pens. And every day, I'm just looking through the websites, looking for a new pen, and the next shiny object to acquire to satisfy my lust you can call it we call it a lust yep a lust lust of the flesh you know lust of the eyes the pride of life these are the three big things oh gosh these are three big things that really really kills a person and it comes to a point where i find that this fountain pens right this collection this hobby is becoming an idol is taking over god as my number one idol and it is just so convicting right god really convicted my heart one day and you know say I, I told god god i want to repent and it's not it's not an instantaneous repentance right it took a while but i'm telling god god i want to really repent i want to use this collection or use this hobby as a tool 
to get to know you even more. So I'll be using my pens specifically just for journaling or even up to meet up with people, to share Jesus with people. But that will be the main thing about these pens. These pens are just tools, just something that is given by God for us to enjoy, but not to replace God himself, right? So this is something I want to encourage everyone is that, you know, there's only one person, there's only one person that can truly satisfy your soul. And that is your creator himself, Christ Jesus. And the Bible says that all things are created through him that is in Jesus Christ. Nothing was created uh, without him, right? So it's through Jesus Christ that we are all created and God created us to have a relationship with him. God created us so that only he can truly fill that void in our souls, in our heart. Only he can truly fulfill and satisfy us and give us true purpose in life. And for those who have not known, not yet known Jesus, I will encourage you to find more about him. Right, I won't be too preachy in this video, but I just want to encourage that truly, truly that Jesus is the only one that can satisfy our desires, our our desires in life. Yeah, pretty much that it is. And when you have Jesus, all these things will just fade away. And truth to behold, all these things are temporal, right? The things of this earth, the earth itself is all temporal, but the kingdom of God uh, will reign forever. Every kingdom will crumble, but God's kingdom will reign forever. And I just want to share this verse with you, with the viewers. And this comes in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 15 to 19. And this is uh, Jesus, right? This is uh, literally Jesus. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in abundance of the things he possesses. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many good goods laid up for many years take your ease eat drink and be merry right so uh and then okay just moving on right but god said to him fool this night your soul will be required of you then whose will those things be which you have provided right and even in verse 21, it says, So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So in, in essence, I just want to encourage everyone, you know, uh, life is more than fountain pens. This shouldn't be your first love. Your first love should be Jesus. Your first love should be God. And when you have him, he will truly satisfy your soul. And you can just use this as enjoyment, as a hobby to draw nearer to God. And, you know, guys, I just want to encourage you on this before the year ends. And I hope this blesses every one of you. So thank you so much once again for watching this video. And I just want to close in prayer. If you're not comfortable with me praying for you guys, please exit this video. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we just want to say thank you for your life. The Lord, that you sacrifice your own very life to save this world and because of your demonstration of your great love towards us that you choose the cross and God we are just so grateful for your sacrifice for your demonstration of your love that you died for our sins and you said in the Bible that whoever believes in you whoever repents towards you whoever choose to put their faith and trust and follow you will not perish in hell, but will have eternal life with you. And God, Jesus, I'm just so thankful that you are my God and you are my King. And I choose to follow you. And we thank you even for <laughs> hobbies, even like fountain pens, that we can enjoy, that we can even use this hobby as a form of a fellowship with people, can talk with people, 
to engage in meaningful conversations with people and also as a tool to draw near to you, to write down your words, to write down your instructions, to write down our experience in this relationship with you, the true and living God. So Jesus, I just want to say thank you once again for all things that you've given to me, given to us in 2022. Let 2023 be a better year ahead as we progress in this intimate relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, in your name, I pray. Amen. So thank you, everyone. It's been a long video. Thank you for staying on for so long. Really appreciate it. Thank you all. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you guys in 2023.